Well, I have sympathy for our speaker who couldn't make it because I was on a plane last night coming in from Chicago and we were four hours late and landed about 1 a.m. So if I sound incoherent, I feel un incoherent. Um, anyway, I did make it though. I want to talk about how higher education really right now suffers, I think, from a misunderstanding of public and private in America and with some ideological perspectives that suggests that private is better, uh, public has failed, uh, and yet in the area of higher education, public higher education, it's the one area where socialism has actually worked, I think. There may be some others, but certainly in public higher education, believe it or not, socialism has actually worked pretty well and better than in the private sector. Uh, that's partly because the private universities, not all of them, but many of them, if they've got a problem, they go get more philanthropy. And then they throw money at the problem. That sound familiar? Throwing money at the problem? Isn't that what the public sector is accused of doing? That's what many rich, elite, uh, private universities do. They throw money at the problem. We do not have that luxury in public universities these days. Uh, I wish we did. Instead, we are constantly trying to count every nickel and to try to figure out how to use those nickels appropriately. So let me first th go through a few things which I think are misunderstandings, then talk about systemic problems of uh, public higher education, and I'm going to talk mostly about public higher education, although education in general, and then finally just end with some things that we need to be doing. So misunderstandings. Um, the, the first one's sort of an odd one, which is that on the one hand, people say, higher education isn't worth it. This is the Peter Thiel idea. Better to just go off and start a business and be uh, Bill Gates. Well, yeah, if you can do it, that's probably a good idea. Uh, but unfortunately, not everybody can do that. And the research is pretty clear. And in fact, Gary Becker was here two years ago, I think in this very auditorium. I'm not sure exactly where he spoke. And he made the case quite eloquently that the research is very clear. Higher education, investment in human capital is worthwhile, big time. Millions of dollars additional lifetime income if you invest in higher education. So first of all, there are great benefits to higher education. Second of all, and it's very important to realize this, is they're not all private benefits. Unfortunately, abroad in the land is the notion that since, it's a private, since there's so many private benefits people get, this is the other side. On the one hand, it's not worth it. On the other hand, it's worth so much, and it's all private. Uh, therefore, uh, we shouldn't provide subsidies for it. But that misses the fact that a large fraction of the total value of public or of any kind of higher education is public. Uh, Mike Hout, John Stiles, and I, uh, in 2005 or so, and then updated in 2012, did a study looking at the cost benefit for higher education for the state of California. And we found that, in fact, every dollar invested in public higher education in California probably brought back three, four, five dollars in benefits. Why? because people who get higher education are less likely to go on welfare. They're more likely to have a job, so they pay higher taxes. They're less likely to be in poverty. They're less likely to go to prison. Prison's very expensive. Uh, prisons spend about, in California, $50,000 per pupil, per student, per inmate. Uh, we pay about, in the public uh, UCs, about $8,000 per student. This has led me to, know, uh, to propose in the past that the UC should become prisons, because at $50,000 per student, we could do quite well. Um, that's that's an, a, a modest proposal in the Swiftian sense. There, but there's lots of virtues to that, by the way. It also would mean that the graduate student who wants to stay forever, all that person has to do is commit three, hopefully minor crimes, and then by three strikes could stay forever <laughs> at UC. And we do have some students who would find that very attractive. Uh, so we can go on. There's actually lots of interesting parallels if you think about it. OK, so education pays off, pays off big time, and it provides enormous public benefits. There is a good reason for the public sector to subsidize higher education. Uh, second, there's the notion that public universities are supported largely by the public. Well, the truth is, as Bob just showed, there's been tremendous disinvestment in public higher education over the last 30 years or so. 
And the net result is there's just a lot less money in the public universities than there used to be by an enormous amount. Uh, at Berkeley, we used to get something on the order of $20,000 per student. We get about $7,500 per student now. Uh, that's in adjusted dollars. So that's pretty amazing. And that's a big reduction. Uh, then there's the question of, well, how much public support do we get? Well, by one accounting, it's 12%. Uh, the Legislative Analyst Office likes to tell us that we actually get 40% of what they call core expenditures, but if you believe that number, you have to believe that we educate a student at about $20,000 per student. And as Bob said, it's probably more like $30,000, $35,000 per student. Uh, and that sounds high, and it, it is, but we provide an extraordinarily high quality education, and furthermore, we do it much cheaper than the privates. So that whatever we're doing, we're doing it fairly inexpensively. Um, there's also the notion that somehow public research universities and universities in general uh, in the public sector, their cost has gone up. Well, the sticker price has gone up. There's no question about that because tuition has gone up. Why has tuition gone up? Well, it's because as there's been state disinvestment in public higher education. Universities had to find some way to get revenues and they increased tuition. On balance, this is something like dollar for dollar, but in fact, for the UCs, it's actually less than dollar for dollar. That is to say, we have increased tuition less uh, than the amount we've been cut by the state. So that in fact, we are doing more with less now than in the past. So the public research university sticker price has gone up, but the actual amount of money being spent, if you take the sum of tuition plus state support, has gone down per student. Some of these numbers, by the way, are sometimes presented and they forget to do things like do it per student because we've taken on a lot of students in the last 10, 20 years in public higher education in California and elsewhere. It's really important to do it on a per capita basis. Um, finally, there's the notion that graduate education is supported by undergraduate tuition. Well, to some extent, this is increasingly true, but it, you really have to look carefully at what that all means. First of all, certainly for the UCs, part of our mission, as opposed to the CSUs, part of our mission is very much graduate education. Well, why? Well, the idea is that you have to train the next generation of scholars who are going to be teachers and researchers and who are going to do the things that allow higher education to keep going. And so that's part of the mission of the UCs, and it's part of the mission of major public research universities around the country. Second of all, the research that graduate students do with their mentors often has big economic payoffs. Unfortunately, we haven't done a good job of making the case with regard to that, partly because it's hard to do. But I read a recent paper which showed that if, in fact, if you take a student, and that student was involved in a project at a university that was a federally funded research project, and then you follow that student, and you follow other students as well, and then later on the student who was involved in the research project ends up in a startup company, that startup company with the student who was involved in the research project that company is much more likely to succeed, that is to say, continue in business, and furthermore to grow to have more than 20 employees. So there's an enormous economic benefit from having public research universities where students get exposed to research and to the methods of thinking scientifically. Finally, part of the money that goes to support graduate students is because those graduate students actually do teaching at public universities. And they're pretty conscientious about it, and we're working hard to make them even more conscientious about it. I think one of the great things about UC is over the last 20 years, I think there's been a real push to make sure we do a much better job of training our students to be good teachers. I myself, for example, uh, teach a course, a 375 course, which is for graduate students who are doing teaching. OK, those are the misunderstandings. I think, about public higher education. What are our systemic problems? I'm going to go through them very quickly. First, our major component is labor. Labor's cost increases faster than the rate of inflation, especially highly educated professional labor, which is what we have. 
uh, and by and large, as, as a major component of our wage bill. And the net, net result is it's very hard to keep up. Second, we're trying to integrate new technologies. That's hard to do. Third, we're trying to make undergraduate education even better, but in a time when it's hard to invest in those things. And finally, universities are actually, public research universities, are taking on R&D jobs for the country that the private sector has decided no longer to do. And that's really important for the future of the country. What do we need to do? Let me just end very quickly. We need better financial models. Bob's right, we don't have a good sense, actually even in terms of our internal accounting often of how our money gets spent, we have to do a better job. We have to create better incentives within universities to make sure we get the outcomes we want. We're working very hard on that here at Cal. And finally, we have to make sure that we keep the traditional mission, that we recognize that we just don't want to be a university that just looks at what the financial benefits are of something, that part of what we do is we educate people to be human beings. And that's an extraordinarily important task of a research university or of any university. And we do not want to give up that mission. Unfortunately, the politics are against us. I don't think uh, in this age of rising Medicaid expenditures and rising health care expenditures, in this age of populism, and in this age of term limits, there's much chance for the public or their representatives to learn much about us and therefore to understand what we really do. And that makes it really tough to make the case for public higher education. Thanks.